I'm going to talk to you here about my formula for making money and how I made $1.2 million with five days work and how anyone can follow this formula. In the comments section of my recent videos, a lot of people are asking me what my system is for making money. So here I'm going to talk about that. And it's actually really simple. Anyone can do this. Well, not anyone can do exactly what I do because I'm a writer. I write for a living. And not everyone is a writer. But everyone can follow this strategy that I outline here and then just adjust it to whatever your expertise or skill set is. And that strategy summarized is to sell many copies of something. Not only did I make $1.2 million with five days work following this strategy, this was not a one-time occurrence. Once I figured out how to do this, I did this many times. I built a very successful advertising business following this formula. And it's actually the formula that all advertising agencies follow. And you can do this too. This formula doesn't just work for building an ad agency. It works for almost any business. In fact, this is pretty much what makes a successful business. I used to think wealth and success comes to those who have good work habits and who know how to focus on the task at hand. And yes, all that's needed. Unless you've inherited wealth, you need good work habits. But there's something else you need. You must get out of the business of trading your time for money. Most people make their living by trading their time for money. And that's what I did until age 31. My first business was a speech writing business. I had written speeches for many of America's leading political figures in the 1980s, including Presidents Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. I wrote speeches for President Reagan's 1984 re-election campaign and George H.W. Bush's 1988 presidential campaign. And I wrote speeches for many well-known political figures of that era. So it was natural that my first business was a speech writing business. I wrote speeches not just for politicians, but also for CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. And that was cool. I would charge about $5,000 for a speech. And it would take me four or five days to write a speech. And I could write about four speeches a month. So that totaled about $20,000 per month in income. And that was pretty decent money in the late 1980s. Keep in mind that $1 in 1990 equals about $2.35 today. So that means I was pulling in a bit more than $40,000 per month in today's dollars. Not bad for a 30-year-old. I can only write for about five hours a day. Then my brain is pretty well fried. So I would get up at 6 a.m. and spend my mornings writing. Then starting around noon, I would interact with my clients and potential clients on the phone or in person for my speech writing business. Or I would do administrative tasks, such as billing and whatnot. Or if it wasn't writing a speech, I would be ghostwriting a book or op-eds for politicians and corporate CEOs. I was essentially exchanging my time for money. And it was a perfectly decent little business. I was perfectly happy doing this. And this is similar to how law firms work. Lawyers sell their time. So my plan was to build up my speech writing business pretty much like a law firm. The plan was to build up to a certain point and then hire some young junior writers to take my overflow work. Then I would sell their time. So that was the plan. And this would have been a perfectly good way to build a business and certainly would have been successful. Law firms and public relations agencies are built using this model. But then I started writing for a direct marketing advertising agency. And this happened pretty much by accident. I'm a writer. Ad agencies need writers. So this agency gave me a try. We did not have the internet in those days. So the primary form of direct marketing this agency did was direct mail advertising, otherwise known as junk mail. And I'm sure you still receive piles of it in your mailbox every day. So I started writing these direct marketing letters for this ad agency. My first few attempts were not especially successful, but were successful enough for the agency to keep using me. I studied the most successful direct marketing mail pieces. I started reading a lot of books on direct marketing and on advertising. I became fascinated with the field. And it wasn't long before my direct mail marketing pieces started doing very well. So I decided to shift my focus from writing speeches to writing direct mail marketing pieces to writing, yes, junk mail. This ad agency was mailing a lot of direct mail marketing letters, about 250 million letters per year. And I knew that. I also knew that they were charging 8 to 10 cents per letter mailed. I figured if I could even get a small percentage of this, that could potentially be a lot of money. A lot more money than charging $5,000 for writing a speech, with a lot less headache. So the fee I negotiated was this. I would charge a flat fee of $2,500 
to write a direct mail package, plus 10% of whatever fee the agency was charging the client for the package. If the agency was charging 10 cents per letter mailed, I would receive a one penny royalty for every copy of my package the agency mailed for its clients. So if the agency mailed 1 million copies of my letter, I would receive a $10,000 royalty payment, plus the $2,500 flat fee copywriting fee. And it might take me three or four days to write the package. So that would be $12,500 per week potentially, instead of the $5,000 per week I was averaging writing speeches. I needed some kind of flat fee for writing the package, the $2,500 just so I could be sure I could pay my mortgage, keep the lights on, and put food on my table. Cover my fixed costs of living, essentially. Now this was actually a very low upfront cost for the agency for the copywriting, for writing the package. A top direct mail copywriter back then could charge $25,000 or even more to write a package, but then no royalty payment. It would just be a flat fee. But I had not yet established a reputation as a top direct marketing copywriter. I was just getting into this business, so I would charge one-tenth of that, a $2,500 fee, but plus a 10% royalty on whatever the agency was billing the client for my package. The agency loved this because it was a low upfront cost for the agency, low risk, and the agency would only pay more if the package worked, if they rolled out the package beyond the test. And This is a great lesson for how to negotiate your compensation. Always try to get a piece of the upside. Also, clients like it if you're sharing the risk. If I had tried to charge $25,000 for writing a direct mail package, I would probably not have had any takers because I did not yet have a track record of success in this field. But if I charge a $2,500 plus a one penny royalty for every copy the agency mails, well, that sounds cheap and low risk for the agency. The agency then won't care much if it's paying me 10% of its billings on my creative product because it's getting 90% of the billings. Now you might think this sounds sort of bad for me, just getting 10% of the billings. Well, not really, because all I had to do was write the package and work with the agency's graphic artist. The agency then had to do everything else, select the list, mail it, interact with the client and so on. My job on that package was done after writing it and turning it in. I could then work on writing and creating another package. And as I got better at this, I was thrilled to see that the agency was regularly mailing 500,000 copies of my package or even a million copies and sometimes even five million copies of my letters profitably. A one penny royalty on five million letters mailed equals $50,000 for me. Creating something once and selling many copies of it was nirvana to me. Again, we did not have the internet back then, or the internet was just in its infant stage. The major forms of advertising were TV, radio, direct mail, print advertising, billboards, and signs. In terms of money spent, Direct mail advertising was the number two form of advertising behind TV, well ahead of radio and print advertising. So this was an excellent business to be in. Direct mail is still a great business. $44 billion per year is spent on direct mail advertising in the United States, which is not far behind TV advertising at $66 billion per year, and it's well ahead of the $11 billion per year spent on radio advertising. The 800-pound gorilla of advertising now is the Internet. About $600 billion per year is spent on internet advertising. But I still very much like direct mail advertising for impact. The impact of a physical letter arriving in your mailbox is at least 100 times greater than an ad on the internet. But I digress. So once I discovered the miracle of charging a royalty on each copy of my direct mail letter that got mailed, I completely shifted my focus from writing speeches to writing direct mail marketing packages. I then had the great fortune of being hired by a large nonprofit organization to write a direct mail fundraising package for them. I charged the $2,500 initial copywriting fee, but instead of charging a one penny royalty per letter mailed, I charged a two penny royalty per letter mailed. The mail piece was a huge success. Donations poured in, and this letter became the top donor acquisition letter for this organization. They mailed 62 million copies of it over the next several years. And how much in royalty payments was that for me? Well, do the math. 62 million copies of my letter mailed times two pennies. That equals $1.24 million for me. So that's pretty good pay for about five days work. I had to write the letter and the package components. That took about three days. Had to go back and forth on it a few times with a graphic artist. Had to get it approved by the client. So it was about five days of work for me. 
and the result was about $1.24 million for me over the next several years. And this letter actually generated a lot more money than this for me because this was the letter that allowed me to launch and build my own advertising agency, an agency that would go on to build tens of millions of dollars over the years. And my clients haven't minded paying me this royalty because my letters have generated more than $1 billion in revenue for them over the years and over the decades. So making money via royalty payments is exponentially better than charging clients for my time. And it's a lot easier. It means you're making money while you're not working. And it's much better than charging a flat fee of $25,000 or $35,000 to write a package with no royalty, which is what the top copywriters of that day were charging. Much better to charge a low initial package copywriting fee, like $2,500 plus a royalty on each copy mailed. And clients like this much better too. It's essentially risk-free for them. No one wants to cut a $25,000 or $35,000 check to have a direct mail marketing package written without having any idea how it will perform. They much prefer to pay a two cent royalty per letter mailed if it works. If it works, they're happy to pay you millions of dollars in royalties over time. And again, if it works, the client nets far more money than I do, 90% more. If you have to pay a salesman a 10% commission on sales, you're not gonna be upset to pay your salesman a million dollars a year in commissions because that would mean your salesman is generating $10 million in sales for you. You would wanna hire an army of salesmen who could turn in that kind of performance. Well, advertising is just salesmanship automated and mass produced, which is why I love the advertising field so much. Instead of going door to door to try to make the sale, your salesman is the letter or the advertisement that can reach millions of people or tens of millions of people with your sales pitch or your offer. So my clients are not buying my time and I'm not selling my time. They are paying me based on the results of what I produce. They are paying me a percentage of the value that I'm actually delivering, which usually is a 10 or 15% markup on the cost of the ad campaign. Clients then only continue ad campaigns that work for them. Smart business people are very happy to pay based on performance. Clients are loath to pay a big upfront fee, but they're happy to pay you based on the value that you actually deliver, a percentage of the money that your efforts bring in the door. So when I had my speech writing business, $5,000 to write a speech sounded like a lot to charge by my potential clients. There's no real way to measure the value of a speech. It's hard to measure what a speech is actually worth. So it wasn't easy to get people to pay $5,000 for a speech. But if I say I'll charge you a two penny royalty for each letter of mine that you mail, well, that doesn't sound like much. I'm also effectively sharing the risk with my client. Smart business people like that. They like it when you have some skin in the game. And when the internet came along, I effectively charged the same way. I would charge a flat fee for the creative, plus a royalty, usually 15% of the ad spend. 90% of my money is made on royalties. Now, it's also important to know that most ad campaigns don't work. You're doing well if 20% work. But when an ad works, it usually works big. For me, about 10% work big. And some of my ad campaigns have worked for many years. It's awesome when that happens. That's like striking oil. The royalties then just roll in automatically. So 10% of my direct mail or direct marketing campaigns work big. Then another 20% do okay. And then many are nothing to write home about or are complete duds. But 10% that are working great and 20% that are working okay, well, that's fine. Now, I do also have an hourly fee, but that's more to discourage my clients from burning up my time with phone calls, meetings, and what I consider unproductive activity. It's much better both for me and my clients if I'm spending my time creating winning advertising campaigns. Any time that I'm spending in meetings or on phone calls is time that I'm not using to create winning ad campaigns that could be bringing in millions of dollars. I have not had to go to a real office since 1998 when I sold my ad agency. I decided I did not really like the administrative and management headaches of owning and running an ad agency with a lot of people. It's just easier and more profitable for me to sit in my lazy boy chair in a t-shirt and my boxer shorts creating winning advertising campaigns and turning my creative product over to an ad agency to manage and to execute. And I will, of course, provide instructions to the ad agency. And I can do this from anywhere. Importantly, all agreements that I negotiate give me complete access to all reports on my ad campaigns so that I can bill for my royalties, but also so that I can track the results and improve the ad campaign. 
I can't improve the ad campaign if I can't track the results. But these principles of how to organize your business and charge for your services doesn't apply just to advertising. These principles can and should be applied to almost any business. You want to be in the business of selling many copies of something. A friend of mine is in the direct marketing business and had an even better idea. He created an envelope that was a kind of knockoff of a FedEx envelope. You know that cardboardish one with the clear plastic pocket in the front? I don't think FedEx uses those anymore. So he made an envelope that kind of looked like that. Cardboardish with a clear plastic pocket. Instead of Federal Express, it was called Jet Express. He suggested that I give it a try, which I did. We tested it and indeed it did dramatically increase response. I think by 100%. And we mailed millions of these envelopes that he created. He also sold this FedEx knockoff envelope to other ad agencies. I think he would mark up this envelope a nickel apiece or something. Now in theory we could have created our own version of his envelope with just different names and designs. But that wouldn't have been that easy because he was making them in such large volume. He was manufacturing millions of copies, even tens of millions of copies. Eventually this envelope wore out as it was probably seen by almost every household in America. I was seeing his envelope in my mailbox almost every week for a period of time. So it wore out after a few years. All ad campaigns wear out after a while. But this envelope allowed him to build a large ad agency, which he eventually sold, I'm told, for about $100 million. His ad agency, of course, did a lot more than make this FedEx-ish knockoff envelope. He would not have created this FedEx knockoff envelope had he not had a pretty good knowledge of advertising and direct marketing. But it was this FedEx knockoff envelope that allowed him to launch and build his advertising agency. The point is this one pretty simple idea, create this FedEx-ish looking envelope, turned into $100 million for him. That's what one simple idea can do. Find something that's working and sell many copies. Find something that's working and just keep doing it. Some of the richest people I know do very simple things. One friend I've known since elementary school sells and delivers gravel. That's all he does. That's all he's ever done. He never graduated from high school, and he's one of the richest people I know. Another guy I know sells bolts. He doesn't even make the bolts. He just brokers bolts. He sells bolts that others make. He's the middleman in the bolt transaction. His expertise is specialized bolts. He finds the bolts that are needed, then marks them up 10 or 15 percent. Now his parents were also in the bolt business, so he knew something about bolts. His parents had machines that made bolts, but he found that he could make a lot more money by brokering specialty bolts. If you own the machines that make bolts, your customer might not actually need the bolts that your machine makes. Better just to find who can make the bolts that your customer needs. Buy those bolts, deliver them to your customer with a markup of 10% or so. Now I have no idea what this guy is worth, but it's tens of millions of dollars, probably more, for selling bolts. Not making and selling bolts, just selling bolts that others make. The point is, is just to find something that's working and sell it over and over again. Sell many copies of it. Maybe it's hot sauce or cookies. Maybe it's gravel or bolts. Or maybe it's an envelope. People tend to overthink their product. You don't need to figure out how to compete with Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, or Tesla. Find something simple to sell. The My Pillow guy sells pillows. I personally guarantee My Pillow will be the most comfortable pillow you'll ever own or your money back. And remember the Sham Wow guy? Hi, it's Vince with Sham Wow. You'll be saying wow every time you use this towel. It's like a chamois, it's like a towel, it's like a sponge. A regular towel doesn't work wet. This works wet or dry. This is for the house, the car, the boat, the RV. Sham Wow holds 20 times its weight in liquid. Look at this. It just does the work. Why do you want to work twice as hard? What's Vince selling? A piece of cloth. Vince also sold this. Hi, it's Vince with Slap Chop. You're going to be in a great mood all day because you're going to be slapping your troubles away with the Slap Chop. Now look, here's a potato. One slap, you got big chunks for stews. Two slaps, home fries in a second. And look at this. When you add a mushroom, the more you do it, the finer it gets. You don't have to switch any blades. You know you hate making salads. That's why you don't have any salad in your diet. Watch this. One slap. Salad. The Ginsu knife ad ran on TV for decades. Make a knife, but this method doesn't work with a tomato. That's why we use the Ginsu. It's a knife that no kitchen should be without. The Ginsu can cut a slice of bread so thin you can almost see through it. It's just a sharp knife. This is one of the most successful direct marketing campaigns in history. Once you find something that's working even a little, just keep doing it. You can become a multimillionaire by selling simple products that are needed like gravel, bolts, pillows, envelopes, paper, knives, towels, and many common products 
if you have an entrepreneurial mindset, some get up and go, plus a rudimentary knowledge of marketing. I have a podcast up here on this channel on how to know when you have a winning product or idea, and I link to that below. It won't matter how good a salesperson or marketer you are if your product is no good. Generally, people fail because they're selling the wrong product. They're trying to sell ice to Eskimos. You want to be selling hamburgers to a hungry crowd. The hamburgers you are selling don't have to be good if the crowd is hungry. So check out my podcast link below on how to know when you have a winning product or idea. And I'll be putting up videos in the near future on how to conduct successful marketing and advertising campaigns. Oh, and I have a book out titled Win Life, Success Skills Schools Don't Teach. This book is primarily aimed at young people in their late teens and 20s who are just launching into adulthood and who are early in their career. But this book contains just about everything I know about how to succeed in life. Check it out. It's available on Amazon in all the formats. And I link to that below. Mm -hmm.